Good morning, card beauty. This is RJ back with another video. So let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day. 1982 Opeachy card. If you know your Opeachies, they were the Canadian release um, replicated tops up until 1991. So uh, I can't remember what the first year of Opeachy was back in the 60s, I think. They started producing cards, and they essentially just took the exact image from the Topps company. They must have had some kind of an agreement. They printed up in Canada, put a little French in where necessary, and issued the card set. It was always a slightly different card stock coming from Canada, and they'd swap out the Opeachy logo for your Topps logo, but pretty much it was the same image. Many years, it was the exact same set, the full set. Although in, in, in various years, they had less players, less cards than Topps would issue. But uh, many years, it was a, an exact duplicate of the Topps complete set. So this is my 1982 Mike Schmidt Opeachy. I'm still working on getting two more Opeachy Mike Schmidt cards to finish up all of them. And those are, of course, the early cards. So... Just that, just, just an FYI, keep knocking the camera. Today's random baseball item. This is from 1975. Uh, the Kellogg's um, Carl Yastrzemski card. Now, why do I have a Kellogg's Carl Yastrzemski card? Uh, it turns out I get, bought a complete set not too long ago, and this one was missing, so I had to pick it up. I do note that there's a little bit of a printing error here. Uh, there's like a red streak across the word base for first base. Uh, but again, it's not that big a deal to me. This is a card I needed so that I could claim I have the whole set. There's 57 cards. This was 51. I am very actively working on trying to get every single Kellogg set ever created. I have about half of them. Uh, maybe a little bit more because they started in like the early 70s. <clears throat> I want to say 70 or 71 was the first year of Kellogg's. And I have, I mean, the last year was 83. Uh, they made some smaller sets later on, but that was when they were really issuing those 60, 70 card sets in, in, the, in the cereal boxes. And I have from 83 back till about uh, 78 complete. And then a couple scattered years in the mid 70s. Uh, that I have acquired. So I'm actively trying to get all of the Kellogg sets, although I get a couple of the early ones, you know, they're like one to $2,000, depending upon where you can find them, those early 70s sets. So we'll see how I go along with that, but I am actively trying to get them all. So this is the final one on that 75 set that I was missing. All right, so today's trivia question. It's uh, the off-season. It is uh, prior to spring training, but after the Hall of Fame announcement. So it is knee-deep into um, trade time. People are signing free agent contracts. There's a lot of wheeling and dealing going on for teams trying to get players. In fact, up here in Philly land, uh, the big news is that Reese Hoskins, who was out all last year with a blown-out knee, um, Reese Hoskins has signed with the Brewers. Now, there's mixed emotions up here in Philadelphia for that because some people think we should have brought him back. Others think, you know, I'm sorry, Reese, we probably weren't, we might have not signed him because uh, he would have wanted a lot of money and he was good, but not awesome. You know, he was good, but not great. And I, I'm happy that we let go and let him go. There was no, there was no room for him on this team anymore. You know, thanks for the memories. We will always remember you fondly, but. It's time for you to go to somebody else who needs you. We do not need him anymore. We just don't. We need pitching. <laughs> so uh, I am one of those who thinks, okay, thanks for the memories, Reese. Always remember you fondly, but uh, good luck to you. <clears throat> so in light of the um, the presence of uh, trades and, and free agent signings, the trivia question today is that kind of a thing. So, in 1971, Rick Wise of the Phillies pitched a no-hitter, a legendary no-hitter, because he also hit two home runs in that game to provide most of the offense on his own. 
Rick Rise throws a pitch, throws a no hitter, and pitches a perfect and and hits two home runs in the same game. A legendary feat that happened in 1971. In the off season of 1971-72, the Phillies traded Wise. The fans were outraged, absolutely outraged. But they got somebody in return for Rick Wise. Uh, it was a very well known trade. During the off season of 1971-72, who did the Phillies acquire in the trade of Rick Wise? Uh, send me that answer. All right, your prize for that will be two 1983 Donruss All Star Hall of Famers. These are the five by set or three by five, the bigger cards from the Donruss All Star set. These were individually packed cards, or I don't know how many cards came in a pack, but they were sold separately. And you have George Brett and Rod Carew. Rod D. Klein Carew. Check that out. George Brett and Rod Carew are your prizes. If you can answer that question, send me an email with the correct answer. I will include my email in the description below along with a repeat of that question. You will have today and tomorrow to answer, and we will pick a winner on Sunday, all right? Good luck to everybody on that. So today, what I want to show off a few things because I purchased a collection from some guy. Some guy put up on uh, Facebook Marketplace that he was selling the 1985 Donruss and Fleer sets, both of them together. So I snagged those up because, believe it or not, I hadn't gotten those two sets yet. I, I don't have a lot of the mid-range Fleer and Donruss sets. I just never bothered to get at them. I was a tops only kind of a kid. So I really didn't buy any Donruss or Fleer uh, articles or boxes or stuff back in the day. Now, as I'm really, really trying to do sets, I'm finding myself going back and picking them up. So um, this guy sold me the 1985 and the 1985 or 1985 Fleer and Donruss sets. So I have them here. Here is now I got a. I gotta repackage these. I'm gonna have to go up to the card store today and buy boxes for these because he's got them in this awful, awful old style um, card uh, pages, not the Ultra Pro. So, you know, not UV quality and whatnot. Here's the 85 Donruss set, whole thing, plus the puzzles on the back. I have a whole Lou Gehrig puzzle thing, which is great because I do collect. All of the puzzles of Donruss, and I have most of those. In fact, I have, I try to get two copies of the uh, puzzles so that I can put one together and keep it in a binder and then keep a loose set never to be touched. And I also got, like I said, the 1985 Fleer set, complete set here. And he's got these little, he actually has like little twist ties or what they call these things, zip ties for the, uh, to keep it together instead of putting it in a binder. But it wasn't just that that he sold me. It wasn't just that. So I also got given to me for Fleer uh, the first box set Fleer ever did, a 1985 limited edition. Now he doesn't have it in the box. He's just got it loose here. I obviously already own this set in box format. So to have uh, loose copies of some of them is interesting. He also had several stickers from various years. I don't know that these are 85 stickers. I don't know what year they came from, but I am actively trying to acquire every sticker that Fleer ever did. So this is perfect for me. I can add these to my collection, put it up on tradingcarddatabase.com, try and accumulate the rest of them. So that was awesome, but not to be done yet, not yet done. There was more that he got, and, and all this was, uh, it was a $100 purchase. I think it was a good deal because it wasn't just those two sets. It was all this other stuff. The full 1985 Action All-Star, these are the uh, 1985, yeah. this is the full set from 1985, 60 cards uh, of the, the five by three by five size cards, just like that one back there. Um, full set of 60 action all-stars. Very cool. And, and again, I already have this set. So <laughs> this is a, an interesting trade bait kind of a thing. But lastly, something I didn't have 
which I was thrilled to have. The 1985 Donruss Super Diamond Kings. These are the uh, five by seven sized Diamond Kings. They matched exactly the normal size Diamond King cards, but they were sold simply as a box set. They were sold as a pack that you would purchase by itself. And not only did they have all of the 26 Diamond Kings, it had a mini puzzle. This was the Lou Gehrig puzzle that you got in your diners. This is a smaller version of what you got in your Donner's card packs, but this was only available in this super thing, and it, you know it came already put together. Um, so I don't have all, I don't I don't have all the cards here because I've started putting them in binders, and I realized I ran out of those. I ran out of these size pages of binders, binder pages. And I got to go buy some more. Um, but that was the final thing I got in that little collection. So for a hundred bucks. Um, 1985 Donruss Fleer, 1980, I'm sorry, 1985 Fleer, 1985 Donruss, and actually I forgot, 1985 Fleer update he included as well. I got the update set for Fleer, and I already had that. So 1985 Fleer, and 1985 Fleer update, 1985 Donruss, 1985 Fleer limited edition box set, a couple stickers. An extra Lou Gehrig puzzle. Um, well, I shouldn't say an extra. I got I got an extra one for myself. Um, the 1985 Donruss Action All Star three by five card set, and the 1985 Donruss Super Diamond King set five by seven one. All that for a hundred bucks. So I think that was a pretty awesome deal I made. Pretty awesome purchase on my end. I'm very happy to have pulled the trigger on that. It's not often you get a good deal on Facebook Marketplace. Too many people selling a 1982 Topps Mike Schmidt for like $30. They think it's worth it because it's vintage. It's old. Must be worth a lot of money. No, I'm sorry. It's not. Anyway, so that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'd love to see if you guys had any great pickups recently. Love to see that on video. I am nearing 400 subscribers. I think I'm only a couple away i really don't track that too much because again i don't get a lot of subscribers my content is not um worthy of uh subscribers i do what i do because i love it not to necessarily acquire more subscribers which is why i don't typically get a lot of people viewing my videos or subscribing to my channel but when i do i like to celebrate with the card community so um i will be um, running a contest if and when I hit 400 subscribers. And I, you know, when I do a contest, it's always a nice VR, but I give away a ton of crap. I mean, I'm, I'm, us I'm usually, I'm usually giving away 10 prizes because I want to try and give away a lot of fu fun things to a lot of different people. I like to get everybody involved. And I got, I happen to have, uh, just from recent purchases that I, I've made, uh, a lot of very, very, very cool things to give away. Uh, so uh, if I ever do hit 400 in the near future, I'll be running a, a, a VR contest. And um, the prizes that will be up for grabs will be pretty significant. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Let's hope we can get there, all right? Uh, again, if you like this video, please consider like, subscribing, commenting, and all that jazz. I really do appreciate that. I'm not looking for any kind of... Um, goal as far as number of subscribers but i have fun with it so uh thanks for watching uh come back again on wednesday for more great trivia and prizes and uh we'll have more fun stuff to show up on that day all right thanks for watching take care